you're out to eat at a restaurant and an employee comes by wearing ripped pants, an ill-fitting shirt that's only half tucked in, and some Nike high tops, I think it's fair to say that you're probably not going to take that person very seriously. Especially if they say, hey, I'm Matt, I'm the manager, nice to meet you. That's the manager? As restaurant operators, how do we ensure that we don't find ourselves in the situation that our leaders present that image that I just described and are taken seriously by both guests and the employees alike? I'm Matt Roberts of Restaurant Ninjas, and today we're going to talk all about how a manager should dress, whether they're a male or female, and what expectations leaders and multi-unit managers can put into place to make sure that their managers look sharp every single day. Hey everybody, welcome back to Restaurant Ninjas, where we help you learn to run your restaurant and not let your restaurant run you. If you work in the restaurant industry in any level, or if you work as a leader in any other type of industry, this channel's for you. I go over all sorts of restaurant operations as well as leadership advice each and every week. Make sure you go ahead and hit subscribe so you don't miss anything and hit that little bell so that you're alerted every time I upload a new video. I'm gonna definitively state to start this video that I believe appearance matters a lot and that anyone in leadership needs to dress the part. I'm stealing this from others, but I refer to this personally as having an executive presence. To ensure you always look good, go with the age old adage, dress for the job you want, not the job you have. But even if you don't want the job above you, dress as good as the level above you because that is how you should dress as a leader. So what do I mean when I say look the part? And what do I mean when I say executive presence? Well, I mean, you should look good. You should look buttoned up. You should look clean. You should look like the manager when you walk by. Multi-unit managers, owners, you're probably wondering, should you buy some of the branded ones? The answer is sure, if you want, but don't make them the standard. To help you figure out how to set a dress policy for your team, I'm gonna go over a list of generalized best practices, and then I'm gonna spend a few minutes and talk about a few things that are specific to both men and women. As a bonus, at the very end of this video, I'm gonna give you a story about me, a personal story about what happened from how I used to dress to how I dress now and why I made the change. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss that, stick around, especially if you're someone who's scratching and craw clawing to try to get ahead, this might help you a lot. So let's get into this. We're gonna start off by talking about best practices for everybody. So here are my list of best practices. If you have seen my employee uniform recommendations, you're gonna notice that it's different and here's why. We're gonna start off and talk about tattoos. So in the employee uniform one, I say it's fine to have tattoos, it's fine to have them visible, don't be an old fogey. I agree with tattoos still as a manager, I'm okay with it. Where it really starts to differ is I don't want any neck tattoos on my managers. It's just kind of how it is, especially if it's anything that could even slightly be offensive. They're just not quite there yet because neck and face are very close to each other. Piercings, totally different story. I really don't want facial piercings on my managers. I know it's a bit of a double standard between what I expect of the employees and what I expect of the managers, but that's just how it is. I don't think that you should look like you're another employee. You should look like the manager, and one way you set yourself apart and have that executive presence is to look different. And not having facial piercings is a really good way to do it because everybody else seems to have them these days. Now, if you have them, just take them out if you're a manager. Don't go and get them. If you're a manager and you're like, oh, I'm gonna go get my nose pierced, don't, okay? I'm just telling you, it's not gonna look good and it doesn't look professional, especially when you have to wear the little Band-Aid over it as it heals. Just don't do it. Either have one and take it out or don't get one after you become a manager, simple as that. Gloves, this one's a bit of a ninja hack. I wear dark clothes a lot. One of the times I look really poorly is after I jump in to help the kitchen and I take the gloves off, forgetting that I put the powder gloves on, and then next thing I know, I have like a white hand of Saruman mark on me. It looks awful. So here's my hint. Get a box of the black nitrile uh, powder-free gloves. Those things are not cheap. Keep them in your office, make them just for you, and get them out when you need to go on the line or keep them somewhere somewhat hidden. That way you can go on and off without looking like an idiot when you get done. Okay, so for the people who set the policies, this part's more for you, but name tags. I hate name tags. As a restaurant manager, my opinion is, if your employees and your customers don't know you and can't recognize that you're the manager, you're doing something wrong if you have to wear a name tag. I would much rather, if you wanna make sure that you look like you work there, get a small branded lapel pin, uh, pin with the emblem of where you're working, kind of like how everybody in government has the American flag, get that instead. That way people know, oh, they're working here, they're well-dressed, they must be the manager. 
Name tags are kind of, I, I don't know. I just don't like them. I feel like I'm working, I'm a 17 year old. I'm, I'm pushing 40. I feel like at this point in my life, I shouldn't be wearing a name tag. And I'm guessing that there's a lot of leaders who feel similarly. And frankly, restaurant management's not the most glamorous of jobs. If we can do one thing as little as not make them wear name tags to make them feel like their job has some more oomph to it, we probably should. Another little hack of mine is have a chef coat as a front of house manager, always. Have it near the line. If you have to jump on the line, if you have to go help cook, instead of just jumping on and hoping to not get dirty, because let's face it, you never have time to throw an apron on, throw a chef coat on, that's a lot quicker. So what I would do is I would throw it on, four buttons, take it home when I used it, wash it, and that was it. It was really nice and easy. I always looked good. My shirt stayed clean. When I was heavier, before I started doing this, my shirt used to end up like on the cutting board and getting cutting board juice, whatever was on the cutting board on it. Yeah, it was not good. This is much nicer. And as far as hats go, please, for front of house managers, don't make them wear hats unless you have a health inspector who is insisting on it. I think it looks bad. I don't think you look professional. What I used to do with my managers, because you do need to wear hats if you work with food, it was, hey, if you're working on the line, if you're working on expo, you need to throw a hair net on. The ladies loved it because then they didn't have hat head when the, hair, when the hat came off. The men didn't seem to care because the only guys I had working for me in management also had my hair cut. So yeah, hair nets seem to work really well. I highly recommend them. All right, let's talk about just men specifically for a moment. Avoid a tie and a jacket if you can, unless you're forced to, which those setting policy don't make your managers wear ties. As a restaurant manager, you should be active. You should be moving around. You should be helping. That tie ends up into the gravy, into the marinara sauce, into soup all the time. I can't tell you how many ties I've gone through in my life, lifetime with this. Even when I tuck it in, it always finds its way out. And jackets are just too hot to be wearing when you're running a restaurant. Dress shirts. Be colorful. Be unique. Go. Don't just wear white. Don't just wear black. I highly recommend the no iron shirts or the no uh, spill shirts. Personally, I've tried pretty much every brand of dress shirt in from like super high end. Uh, Brooks Brothers, we'll call that super high end to express medium range. My favorite ones are actually Van Helsen, Hewson, Hussein. I, I can't say that guy's name right, but they're sold at like Macy's and JC Penney. They're pretty much sold everywhere. They make a really nice work shirt because they're a little bit heavier. The fabric's nice and thick, stains come out of it really well, and they hold up really well as far as wrinkling goes. Some dress shirts will be wrinkled just from wearing it in the car. You don't wanna do that. Another thing is you wanna make sure your shirt is fit correctly. If you're hefty up here, skinny down here, get a fitted shirt so it doesn't look all baggy around the sides. If you're a big tall guy and your shirt comes untucked, get a longer shirt or wear shirt stays. Wear something to keep your shirt tucked in at all times because there's not much worse than your shirt tail hanging out. As far as pants go, any type of slacks are fine. However, another ninja hint for you, I only wear dress pants, like suit style pants to work in my restaurant. Here's why. That microfiber, it doesn't get wrinkly nearly as bad or nearly as quick. It stays looking good longer. They look really sharp and they're super light. So they're not hot. So when you're going in and out of a hot kitchen and you're wearing those nice light pants, it just feels better. Pleats only if you're a bigger guy. I'm not a fan of pleats even as a bigger guy because it makes me look fatter than I already am. So if I can avoid pleats, I do. Shoes, non-slip for you to set the example. If you're a guy, I highly recommend going on the shoes for cruise. There's an executive style shoe that goes up to a size 14. Thank God I wear that one. Keep your hair nice and neat. Keep your beard nice and neat. Shave every day. And on casual Friday or whatever casual day you have, don't go down too far. Instead of a button down, have a dress polo. Instead of dress slacks, have really nice dark wash jeans. Your pants should always match your socks, whether you're in casual day or regular day, and your belt should always match your shoes. Ladies, I had to consult my wife for some help on this one. She used to be a manager way back when, before we had kids. Here's what she had to say. She said, slacks or a skirt. Okay, simple enough. She was a big fan of the button down shirts. She used to get hers from Victoria's Secrets. She said they make a really nice line of reasonably priced button down shirts that wash up really well and hold up well to the daily wears in the restaurant. As far as sweaters go, they're totally fine. Uh, V-necks are fine. As long as your cleavage isn't hanging out, if it is, you need a camisole, don't do that. 
I really don't want to have to have that conversation with you if you work for me. And that's it. I mean, very quick, very simple guidelines. But if you follow this, you're going to look good. And I'm here to tell you, if you look good, your employees are going to take you more seriously. Your leaders are going to take you more seriously. And if you want to move up, this is going to help you. Here's a story for you. Way back when I was a general manager and I kept getting passed over. Couldn't figure out why I couldn't get a spot at the next level. No one could beat my numbers. Nobody could touch my culture. I had ran a really good operation, but I looked like crap. I was really heavy at the time. I've since lost about 160 pounds. My clothes didn't fit right. I just bought the biggest clothes I could find and throw them on. Some of them were too small. They were pretty beat up. They were only half tucked in. I had a hole in a couple pairs of pants. The bottom of the pants were fraying. I looked like garbage. One day, a old district manager walked in for lunch, just kind of to say hi, nothing major. And we were talking and he goes, he said, hey Matt, you look like, it kind of hurt. I was like, oh, that's, that's dark. So I'm like, all right, well, that is what it is. That's his opinion. I went home and told my wife expecting some sympathy, but what I got was, yeah, he's right. You really have let yourself go. This wasn't about weight. This was just about how I dressed. So we said, okay, how do we fix this? So we went, dropped about six or $700 cause I was fat. So I had to go to the big and tall store which is like two times more expensive for everything. Dropped a ton of money on shirts, pants, dress shoes, made a commitment to myself to shave my face and my head every day. Cause I used to go three days without shaving. And guess what? Eight weeks later, I was a multi-unit manager. Now, is that a coincidence? Possibly, but I don't think it was. I don't think I would have ever gotten to that level if I did not clean myself up. From that day forward, from every job I've had since, I have made sure I look good when I go to work. It's very important to me because I feel that it's just a big part of the job. And I hope that after watching this, you both understand that and you got enough tips to help you. If you need more tips though, let me know, hit me in the comments. I had to do a ton of research on this way back when to make sure I dressed and didn't look like an idiot because to be honest, I could barely match clothes. Ask my wife. So question of the day, how important do you think it is that a manager dresses in a manner to present the executive presence that I talk about? Are any of you dealing with a manager who just doesn't get it? Let me know in the comments and let's talk about it. Have a wonderful rest of your day and remember, it is a beautiful day to be alive. Later.